Christoween season at last is finally here. Never heard of Christoween? Well, then lend me an ear. Here's a tale of a boy who put two into one, and the resulting phenomena is delightfully fun. This story's all true, a wonderful ride about monsters and Christmas. It's called Frankie-fied. Halloween or Christmas, which will it be? But little Donnie Druthers likes them equally. Do I have to make a choice, he said with a pout. They're both my favorite, there's really no doubt. But the classroom assignment was perfectly clear. Give a speech on your favorite holiday of the year. Though he likes both the same, he had to settle on one. Man, this classroom assignment is simply no fun. So he put his wild imagination to use to come up with something that's clever, obtuse, and then an idea, a hybrid of sorts, a wild take on Christmas, including witches with warts. Christoween is what he calls it, the two days combined. Twas the best of both worlds in young Donnie's mind. On a full moon, old Blitzen becomes a weird deer. And Dasher a mummy, at least so I hear. His classmates were flummoxed, to say the very least. But Donnie continued, he never once ceased. I give gifts of wolfsbane and small shrunken heads and wrap them in paper of deep blacks and reds. The students complained of the lack of tradition. They thought Donnie might have an odd unknown condition. What you're saying's not normal, it's creepy, it's weird. But Donnie continued as the students all jeered. Christoween celebration starts up mid-October. I celebrate two months. By January, it's over. Why celebrate for two days? Celebrate for two months. Then Billy the bully said, Donnie's a dunce. <laughs> Paying no mind to his classmates' guffaws, he continued his story, still pleading his cause. Even Santa was different with big hungry jaws, and everyone shuddered to hear of Santa's claws. Instead of twinkling lights on his black Christmas tree, Donnie hangs skeletons. Jenny Jenkins said, "Ee!" Spiders and webs replace tinsel and holly. He draws stitches and scars on the neighbor girl's dolly. A monsterful Christmas is young Donnie's goal. No candy, no trinkets, he wants all the coal. On his door hangs a gross, wilted black Christmas wreath with big bloodshot eyes and green, nasty teeth. He finished his story from the room not a peep, except Sally Suskine who said, what a creep. Oh, one more thing, he said clear and bright. A scary Christoween to all, and to all a good fright. Donnie heard none of his classmates' cruel taunts. He was much too busy thinking of houses to haunt. Immune to the pain his classmates had fraught, he thought it was silly to get overwrought. So young Donnie chose to simply ignore them. But his fantastic tale had certainly not bored them. As weird as he is, he's really quite gifted. He tells his tall tales to get spirits lifted. But his stories are odd, tis a curious thing. Part Poe and part Lovecraft and even Stephen King. There is something askew in the young lad's gray matter. He prefers to write stories, doesn't care much for chatter. No doubt Donnie's different, his classmates agree. Monster books and sci-fi are all that he reads. It isn't uncommon for Donnie to wear fangs and comb his hair into Barnabas bangs. The kids think that he's weird, not right in many ways. You won't be laughing when I'm famous someday. It's true Donnie is clever, his imagination no end. But the kids don't believe that Frankenstein's his friend. You see, it happened one Christmas, and I swear this is true. When Santa didn't show, cause Santa had the flu. <laughs> but he enlisted a substitute. Who is it, you ask? Santa contacted Frankenstein to handle the task. But subbing for Santa worried Frankie a bit. The children may see him and pitch a fright fit. The kids may catch glimpses of Frank's frightful features and then believe Santa Claus is one of night's creatures. But Santa assured him it would be A-OK. -okay. Just sneak in, deliver, and be on your way. Don't linger for long so kids can't sneak a peek. Watch out for those floorboards, they do tend to creak. Be sneaky and stealthy, use your monster school training. Frankie listened carefully to Santa's explaining. Oh, Frankie did his best to cause not a fright. What he didn't know was that Donnie stays up all night. While most kids are sleeping, Donnie's purely nocturnal. He draws monster pictures and jots in his journal. Donnie heard a small noise. Yay, Santa is here! He ran out to greet him. Frankie froze up with fear. 
But Donnie soon realized whose presence he was in. He recognized the stitches and the big jutting chin. Oh, wow! Here he was, face to Frankenstein face. His favorite monster was there in his space. Not frightened at all, but filled with utter joy, he hugged the monster tightly. He was one happy boy. Frankie was relieved that Donnie weren't scared. Surely no other child would ever have dared to do what Donnie had done by hugging him tight. Frankie thought to himself, hey, this kid's all right. From that moment on, a friendship was reared, and Donnie waited for Frankie to come next year. But it was Santa who returned the next Christmas night. Frankie wasn't there for Donnie to hug tight. Donnie loved Santa, who wouldn't, you know? But still he wished somehow that Frankie would show. The next Christoween, Donnie hatched a great plan that may help him see his tall pally again. Instead of a normal Christmas stocking to hang, Donnie created a wonderful thing. He cut and he pasted, he stitched and he sewed. He was proud of his product, his pride really showed. There on the mantel next to the chute, he hung up a stocking that resembled a boot. But a boot unlike any you've likely seen before. This boot was exactly like the ones Frankie wore. He figured that Santa would see this and know that Donnie missed Frankie. Oh, he missed him so. Not a normal Christmas stocking in the traditional sense. It needed a name, so therefore and hence, he called it Christoween Stalking. That sounded just right, because stalking is what all monsters do every night. The plan worked out perfect, because last Christmas Eve, coming down through the chimney, oh, would you believe, it was Frankie in person. He came for his friend. They promised each other their friendship no end. Frankie said, Santa told me about your Christoween stocking. He told all the North Pole it had everyone talking. It ended up being the one perfect clue. And that's why I've come here tonight to see you. The plan had worked beautifully. It got the perfect result. Frankie tilted his Santa hat over one bolt. Donnie Druthers, you truly are worldly and wise. And for you, little buddy, a Christmas surprise. He took Donnie up to the roof on that night. What he saw would have chilled other children with fright. But Donnie Druthers loved it. He had not a fear. It was Frankie's own team of mutant reindeer. He pet them and gave them some hemlock to eat. The sleigh was a hearse. Frankie said, take a seat. Oh, this really was the best of all best Christmas treats. And with that, Donnie's awesome Christoween was complete. On Boris, on Bella, Edgar Allan and Poe. On Chaney, on Vincent, you too, Marie Laveau. With that, Frankie's hearse flew off into the night. Scary Christoween to all, and to all a good fright. Every Christoween season, Donnie hangs without fail. Frankie's Christoween stalking on a ten-penny nail. He chuckles and laughs and then recounts the tale of the best Christmas ever. Every freaky detail. So instead of celebrating on only one day, I suggest that you do it the Donnie Druthers way. Celebrate the days together and both months in between. And wish all your friends a scary Christoween.